Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Matthew Rasmussen. And in my last talk, I spoke about an agonist and an antagonist. Uh, primarily what I focused on is the direct properties of an agonist and an antagonist and what they do to the uh, receptor sites of the nervous system. And today what I'm going to focus primarily on is the indirect agonist versus indirect antagonist. What they do is they they alter a alternative receptor site that is on that dendrite, whereas the direct, they influence the, the main um, binding site for that neurotransmitter. Um, indirect, they work via an alternative binding site. So an indirect agonist, what it does is it is similar to the direct agonist in that as it comes along and it binds to that receptor site, it's going to influence that neuron in some sort of fashion. It may make the um, binding site over here a little bit more effective if that neurotransmitter actually comes along and binds to it. Okay, Whereas the indirect antagonist, it comes along the same way and it binds to the indirect receptor site. However, again, it's the antagonist and it's not going to allow anything to occur. It's just simply going to block. So that's not going to influence the neuron in any way. It's not going to make this receptor site any more effective if it was bound with that neurotransmitter. Okay, So that is how an um, indirect agonist and an indirect antagonist work. I hope this helps, and thanks, and have a great day.